We have shocking video of what's going on in one of the busiest BART stations in the Bay Area. Open IV drug use, unconscious men and women, piles of vomit on either side of the hallways. And one more, I just, I gotta pull out the camera. I gotta show my friends this. They're not gonna believe it. It's, I mean, it, you can see there's dozens of them. And needles everywhere, crack, heroin. And like cities across the country, they have a problem. I'm looking for the needles so nobody gets poked. I see needles, I see OD, I see... I see drugs being sold, drugs being done, drugs being stuffed in their mouths. But so far, both the city and BART have proven no match for a human crisis that offers no easy solutions. Has this problem just gotten markedly worse recently? Uh, yes, it has. Well, on a recent BART trip, one of our reporters came across hypodermic needles. BART admits it is simply overwhelmed by the crisis that has landed in its hallways. We're in the midst of a national homelessness crisis, and we're also in the middle of a national drug crisis. Right now, our entire region is struggling to find answers for an explosion of homelessness and cheap, powerful narcotics. And if you're BART, well, you are not immune to the problems in the communities you serve. So this, for now, is the status quo, a daily commute through a human crisis that shows no end. You do, you feel bad for these people in a way. I mean, because you are human and you see them. This isn't going anywhere, it looks like. It's just getting worse. The survey by health service company Cygnus showed that nearly half of Americans say they sometimes or always feel alone. And if you're thinking this is all just fear mongering and that people have always felt like this, well, you'd be wrong. The percentage of Americans who reported feeling lonely was around 15% in the 1970s and 1980s. And as many, as I've been called by many in the medical profession, Loneliness is a modern day epidemic. So how can over 300 million people in the United States on this planet of 7 billion be so isolated from each other? Or at the very least, feel like they are. Being lonely is not just about being alone. Psychologists say you can be surrounded by people, but still feel isolated. One feels a sense of emptiness, kind of like an emptiness of the soul. That's a great question, and I think it, it's one of those topics that's easy to overlook. Mental health and that feeling of isolation. You know, you don't, you wouldn't have nearly as many shootings and things like that. I believe if people weren't having, you know, weren't dealing with the mental issues that we're dealing with in today's day and age, and loneliness is a major factor. If someone's feeling alone and isolated, they are far more liable to then kind of move into hate and move into blame and move into those kind of things. Well. Emotional isolation, more commonly known as loneliness, has been proven by vigorous research to have negative health outcomes. So in a lonely person, their immune system is so overworked that it leads to higher incidences of things like cancer, neurodegenerative diseases, heart diseases. It literally changes your blood. One feels a sense of emptiness, kind of like an emptiness of the soul. More people died in 2016 from an uh, overdose than the sum total of all the Americans who died in the 20 years of the Vietnam War. That is startling. Do they want to hear that I'm sorry because I represent the drug dealer that sold them the drugs at that point? But more than anything, I want to to them to understand the reality and the truth about addiction, that their kids weren't themselves. For the first time in our nation's history, heroin is killing more people than guns. But the death toll itself doesn't tell half the story. The opioid cocktails are more dangerous now than ever. This is a whole other demon and you can't get it off your back. So we're gonna do what we have to do to beat the monster. The woman charged with killing her mother, then gouging out her eyes, will remain behind bars. After admitting to killing her own mother, Camille Bala told detectives near Palm Beach she smoked marijuana that she believed was laced with Flaca or PCP. During her drug-fueled rampage, Bala gouged out her mother's eyes. They have superhuman strength, they're psychotic, belligerent. It takes a lot of people to hold them down. People like these, 
often stripping off their clothes as their temperatures soar up to 105 degrees. We're calling it the devil's drug. Ray Rapaglia runs a drug rehab center in Fort Lauderdale and says floppy. Odd and dangerous, even illegal behavior at some points reported by co-workers of a local pediatrician. Shocked a North Texas pediatrician suspended from his practice for bizarre and dangerous acts. Yeah, we have some uh, documents, Doug. They show red flags that go back to January or so that um, ended uh, essentially last Thursday when this pediatrician of more than 20 years showed up to his office this year in his pajamas, sobbing and essentially having a breakdown. Place for activity. A place Trouble for Dr. Kurt Flagger started just days into the new year. Parents leaving appointments today tried to make sense of it all, which gets more difficult as the allegations go on, like when co-workers heard him yelling Satan with families and prayed aloud from the Old Testament, slapped a subordinate on the buttocks and kissed another, or wore the same sweatpants and red shirt to work three days in a row. He started bringing a dog into the office, rolling around with it in the hallways as patients and families were walking through. He started showing up late, missing appointments. He was arriving with slurred speech. Get this, in a matter of weeks, he told a co-worker on one occasion he was late because he was having sex with his fiance. In January, they said it started when he was roughhousing with a two-year-old, tried to throw him on his shoulder and missed, dropping the child onto the ground and onto his head. Uh, then he became very bizarre in the months that followed, according to the documents, praying aloud from the Old Testament. Uh, and there's much more that we couldn't quite fit into this piece. Say he started running late a lot and returning to the office with slurred speech. Now to that mid-air scare we mentioned at the top. A passenger tried to open the door of a plane in flight today. I Passengers on board United Express Flight 5449 restrained this Boise, Idaho woman who was ranting about being God. She appears to be saying, I am God, repeatedly. This happened on a Skyway. As another man holds her down in the aisle. <laughs> Moments earlier, she would tried to open the aircraft door while the plane was in flight, traveling from San Francisco to Boise this morning. We're not as inclined to accept them in our program because we know that they might relapse they pose safety threats to the rest of our residents. But he decided to take a chance on Stephanie. Now eight months clean and living, she says, for her daughter. I know for sure that I'm lucky to be alive right now. It's by the grace of God that I'm alive. 142 Americans a day are dying from overdose. Telling me he has never seen anything quite like the grip prescription pills has on our communities. I don't know how many people I know that are hooked on Adderall, but they believe because it's prescribed that it's okay. Insisting big time dealers and drug gangs don't have to bother selling pills. The pharmaceutical companies have flooded America with enough pills to create an unlimited supply of addicts. Those pharmaceutical companies can buy out our own government and, and allow them to produce, knowingly produce narcotics that they know are going to get the people hooked. Once hooked on painkillers, Robert says it's easy to convince someone heroin is cheaper and stronger. We don't have the numbers on the lost jobs, the broken marriages, the children who've been sent into foster care by this crisis. You're constantly in a state of, I, I hurt, so I need, my body feels like it needs to heal itself. Wow. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and look, that's one of those important things. I mean, in, in prehistoric society, you know, when you go back and look at those, you know, the worst thing that could happen to somebody is getting thrown out of the group or kicked yeah. out of the tribe or whatever, yeah. you know, that on a, on a prehistoric level, that's a death sentence. Yeah. So, you know, yes, we're not at that level anymore, but that doesn't mean that that feeling of isolation also can't be a death sentence. No, it can be. And yeah. that's the thing that we don't think about is that taking yourself, whether it's you know, we, we sort of break up into tribes. Everybody mm. has to have their tribe. They have to have their place where they belong so they can tell everybody else that I belong in this group. 
But then there's a whole bunch of people who are left out when there isn't this perfect tribe as we all become more individualistic, I guess. So thank you, political parties. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, right. Great job, guys. Yeah. You really made it easier for all of us. But a 28-year-old advertising executive in the UK uh, a couple of years ago in an article had described loneliness in the millennial world and, and for wait, uh, dating and for women saying, when we're all cohabitating but not necessarily romantically entwined, it's possible to feel deeply lonely, even when your house is full of people and you're going out all the time. Shagging people you don't love can make you feel lonely. Dating apps are bleak. Admitting you're lonely as a single woman is, ex is especially noxious. Nobody wants to come across like a desperate, warty old maid. So we pretend we're not lonely. So I say, Ty and me, like, I yeah. admit it, I'm lonely sometimes. Yeah. Not yeah. in like the creepy way, but we have to just admit that we need people. We, we, we can't we always do it alone. We need people and we gotta start reaching out. You wanna change the world, you gotta be inclusive, not exclusive. Leah Darrow first gained attention when she competed on the reality TV show, America's Next Top Model. She now speaks and writes about chastity, modesty, and true empowerment for women. I had the chance to sit down with Leah Darrow last week. One of our interview, Darrow and I discuss how the way we view our body has been warped in our society and contributes to the culture of death. Leah Darrow, thanks for being with us today. Absolutely. We're here at a conference all about ending sexual exploitation. Mm -hmm. There's widespread pornography addiction, sexual assault pervaded into our culture. How did we get here? <laughs> How do we get here? Well, uh, Humanae Vitae speaks a lot to that. Hmm. Um, we've reduced the human person to parts. That's happened over a very long time. Um, this whole idea of sexual liberation does not liberate women mm -hmm. at all. It does mm -hmm. not help our culture at all. We've been reduced to parts, women in particular. Uh, we don't really know who we are. Mm -hmm. And when you don't know who you are, then you don't know how to act. We have forgotten like the basic sense of human dignity, that our dignity is rooted in our creation. And when you break apart that, when you forget that, when you have some type of spiritual amnesia, mm. then the actions that flow out of the human person become disordered as well. You and I have both only lived in a post Roe v. Wade world where mm. women are encouraged to say, my body, my choice. But how does that affect the way we as women view our bodies? Right. Well, I think, number one, it pits women against women, too. Hmm. It's my body, my, my choice. And so we want to completely sever the connection with the sexual act, with procreation, with hmm. the fact that like uh, it actually could produce another person. My hmm. body, my choice doesn't hold up because hmm. it's, there's another body in your body. And that's right. not your choice. And the choice that you made with your body, with another body, can produce <laughs> another body. There's a lot of bodies there. Right. But there's that idea. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hold up. There's mm -hmm. no proof that that is li liberating women. There's mm -hmm. no proof that actually helps women. And we see time and time again all the problems in our culture come back to this place of really forgetting once again who we are, what we've been made for, and how to act the way that we've been created. It also showed that social media use alone is not a predictor of loneliness, as many have thought. That students have higher loneliness scores than a retirees. But I also think there is something to social media in itself of a Facebook feed. Everybody looks happy. Yeah, Jason, there's been some contradicting studies on the impact Lots of, of social studies. media on loneliness. Yeah, it's a tricky thing to figure out because the Cigna report found no correlation with loneliness and social media mm -hmm. use. And part of that is because everyone in that age group is using social media, right? Leah, you have modeled in the fashion industry, mm -hmm. and often when we think of fashion, we automatically think of beauty. But right. as you write in your new book, The Other Side of Beauty, there is an ugly side to mm -hmm. that. In your opinion, how does the beauty industry warp the way we view our bodies? Well, I think you, you absolutely hit on right there. It does exactly that. It warps. Hmm. And so the beauty industry, we think that it's our friend because it's the beauty industry. And it makes us look good. And we want to be beautiful. Right. Okay. Once again, there's no problem with that in and of itself. Hmm. Beauty is not the enemy. That's really important to remember. Mm. Beauty is an attribute of God. Beauty is not owned by Chanel. It is not all owned by Dolce & Gabbana. It is, mm. it is a piece of God. It is how we come to know and experience God. Mm. And so with the beauty being an attribute of God, we have to understand that the world, 
because the world is broken and we're broken people mm -hmm. it is distorted it's disordered it to an extent where women once again are reduced to parts or also we seek our value and our worth in this disordered type of beauty there's a beauty standard that's out there today that we have willingly accepted that mm -hmm. says that we have to be um, a certain number on the scale mm -hmm. our hair's got to be super shiny uh, teeth have got to be straight and if you don't look like the girls in the magazine, if you don't look like the girls on Instagram, then you're just not good enough. Mm. And so there's a constant feeling of comparison. And we're always comparing ourselves as women to other women, which is not at all what we have been created to, to, to do or to be.